Why does it seem like so many people hate solar power systems nowadays? Well, I'm gonna talk about 11 reasons and why some of them are legitimate and why some of them are absolutely silly. Let's talk about it. There's a lot of misinformation out there about solar power systems and a lot of people get turned off really easily from getting one of these for their home because of all that misinformation. I want to help people understand why this is a good solution for some people, but not everyone. And being armed with all of the information before you even think about getting something like this is super important. Let's talk about that first reason, which is unrealistic expectations. And that is perpetuated by bad salesmen, bad solar salesmen that are out there, and also bad government salesmen. It's pushed by crafty advertising, which doesn't tell you the whole story. When it's sold by these unscrupulous salesmen, the costs are unrealistic, the power generation expectation is unrealistic, and coupled with that, the energy bill offsets are unrealistic. And then you get a lot of companies that just are poor at calculating how much solar that you need for your house to be completely self-sufficient. As you can see though, I'm a huge proponent of solar. It runs my house. A lot of these door-to-door -door solar salesmen out there are not calculating properly the number of panels that people need and the inverting power that they need to run their whole house. I drive everywhere and I see panels on houses that are maybe 10 to 15 panels for a 2,000 2,500, 3,000, 3,500 square foot house. A lot of these panels aren't big either. These are 450 watt panels. The ones I see all the time are maybe 300, 350 watts. That's not going to make a dent in the amount of energy that that house needs and uses every single day. I can drive all around Dallas and see solar panels on roofs that are the incorrect angle for optimum production for the panels and also panels on the east side, panels on the, I've even seen them on the north side. It's absolutely crazy. Those panels are only producing a fraction of what they can at their optimal position. Now in many suburban cases, that's the only choice, but there's too few panels to do much of anything except take money out of your wallet. Or yes, maybe it could be used to run a refrigerator in a power outage and not much else. So here are two reasons that kind of go together. The first one is that solar panels are delicate. Well, they're absolutely not. They're incredibly tough. A lot of people say, hey, well, they'll break in a hailstorm or something like that, or they will get torn up by the wind. Well, if you have the proper racking, they're obviously not gonna get torn up in the wind. Hailstorms don't affect these much at all. You have to have giant hail hitting these. So these particular panels, these solar ever, ever panels that I bought, um, they are rated for one inch hail at 50 miles an hour. That's a really serious and rare, rare event. So there's really nothing to worry about in terms of damage to these. Now, another concern people have is maintenance. So I have cleaned these off maybe twice. I've had them for a year and a half. We, and we do have a lot of pollen in this area, but we do get a lot of rain. They are set at 30 degrees, and I rarely, if ever, have to clean them off. And we don't get much snow here. So that is a concern if you live up in an area where you get a lot of snow, and you have to pull the snow off them at some point. But if you want your own power generation station for your home, there's gonna be some work involved. The other thing that rises up with maintenance and is a concern of people is the batteries. So very old technology, uh, lead acid batteries needed maintenance. They needed their electrolyte balanced and filled up and they did off gas, but that has pretty much been eliminated out of all the battery technologies that are available today. You have sealed lead acid, you have AGM batteries, and lithium iron phosphate batteries, which in my opinion are the absolute best. They require zero maintenance. Actually, all of them pretty much require zero maintenance. But the lithium iron phosphates, like the ones that we got inside, are the best. Another concern that raises its head all the time is that solar systems are unreliable. Well, that one is kind of true and kind of false at the same time. 
simply because it relies on the sun. So like today, as you can see, we've got a very cloudy day. These panels aren't producing much right now. Hopefully it clears up, but that's why you have a battery backup system. But before I talk about that in depth, the equipment, the solar equipment that is out there on the market has been around for a very long time. Remember, solar power for houses started coming up in the 1970s, so that's about 50 years. So the advancement in technology for these systems for homes has grown so much. And the new system that I am putting in my barn, the Victron system, is virtually bulletproof. Although I'm not naive, things can happen, but they can happen with any technology. And that unreliability issue is happening also with our grid in the United States. It's aging and it's not getting fixed quick enough. That's really another reason why I'm a proponent of solar. Okay, friends, here's a big one. And it goes back to those unscrupulous salesmen that are out there. And that is getting the proper type of system because people get upset and hate solar systems because it doesn't power their house. Well, that's because they've probably been sold a system that is too small and is only grid tied. Friends, a system that is only grid tied will not work if the grid is down. If you want to sell back to the grid, that's fine, but get a hybrid system, something that is coupled with having batteries in your house for that backup when the grid is down. Because you don't wanna buy or spend so much money on a solar system, and then when the power is out, you don't have any power. That is a complete waste of money. And that is why I only ever recommend getting a hybrid system or an off-grid system that essentially operates like a generator. Now, I'm a proponent of using this technology and I use it for self-reliance because I'm not gonna rely on unstable grids. Let's get to the next reason. And that reason is that they are unsightly and ugly. Well, that's probably the silliest thing I've ever heard. Even if they are unsightly and ugly to you, that should not be a reason to deter you from getting them to produce power for your house in the event that the grid is down. The next one is so obvious, they are weather dependent and they are time of day dependent. So obviously at nighttime, you are not creating any power for your home. That's why you need the battery backup. And if you don't have that, you're relying back on the grid. And if the grid is down, you're out. And if you live in an area that has less sun hours and you've been sold a system that's too small for your home, then that's gonna give a bad taste in your mouth and you're gonna tell people about it and it's that it just doesn't work, which is not correct. Those unscrupulous salesmen who sold a system that was too small with unrealistic expectations need to be run out of town. The next one is solar systems are expensive. Well, they actually are and the batteries are the most expensive part of the system. The panels are the least expensive part of the system. Most 400 watt panels are only around $180 and you can buy used panels if you want. But don't let the cost deter you. If it's your goal to generate power for your home, you can start small and then build up. Solar components nowadays can be added onto over and over and over again in many cases. The new Victron system that I'm putting in at my barn, I can run six inverters and I think it's 24 MPPTs. And if you don't know what that means, click on the video at the top of the screen where I describe the system that's going in the barn. Another reason that people hate solar is they say that it produces a lot of pollution when manufactured. Well, that's true. The mining of the minerals for the silicon crystals and the mining of the minerals for the batteries does take a lot of embodied energy to produce and hence a lot of pollution. But after the system is installed, there's zero pollution at all. However, when your system runs its lifespan, then that waste, I guess you could say, would be a pollutant. But these are new and they have a 25 year lifespan at least and my batteries have probably a 20 year lifespan on them. So by that point, I believe the technology will exist to recycle these properly. But as you can see in the background back there, I have a propane tank that also supplies my house and it pretty much produces zero pollution also at this point in its life. Of course, when that gas was taken on the ground and refined, there was some pollution involved in it, but now it's not doing anything either. 
Which is why I don't push one technology over the other. I take advantage of what's out there to help me in my self-reliance journey. And invariably, some people will misinterpret what I'm talking about here. So really the last reason that people hate solar is because it can impact the ability for you to sell your house. And that's why I'm a big proponent of putting the solar panels on ground mounts. Usually the systems that are sold are being financed and I do not recommend that at all. Pay cash and then expand your system later, but those solar panels are being put on roofs. As an architect, I don't recommend putting holes in your roof. Get a ground mount. Now there are many different types of ground mounts. Obviously this one is big and it would not fit on many suburban properties. But something like this EG4 bright mount can be layered in a backyard and have panels on it that are low to the ground and still get enough sun and you can still fit enough panels with enough of these mounts. So when buyers go looking for homes and one has solar on it, more than likely that system has not been paid off yet. And as the buyer, you are responsible for picking up the tab on that solar, on the rest of that solar system. So that's contributed to a little bit of hatred by real estate agents for solar systems on houses. And knowledge is power. Now that we can understand what solar is and what solar isn't, and what some people out there are thinking about it. If you are thinking about a solar power system, you can be better informed of all these issues. And I do highly recommend getting them. We've seen way too many issues with our power grids. I want you to click on the links below the video, which has a listing of all the parts and pieces all of the equipment that I purchased for my system, actually two systems on my property. And once you've done that, click on this series of videos right here, which is our full DIY series on how to install your own solar systems. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.